Hello everyone, Perry back here with another exclusive Collider interview at San Diego Comic-Con 2019. This is a very exciting one because I've got the team behind the new Dark Crystal series right here. I, I still can't believe this is happening. It's mind boggling to me and I'm so excited to see some footage. To start here, I wanted to ask you too how long you've been with this iteration of the project because I know that it originally started as a, a computer generated uh, idea and then you switched over to the puppetry. So what was the uh, transition from one to the other like? It w well, we, we it, it, hi. It, it, Actually, it never was a computer was never, generated. It was never gener oh, really? yeah, no, it was never, it was, it was, we just wanted to you know, re-explore uh, the world of the Dark Crystal Thra. Uh, technology had brought, mm -hmm. you know, filmmaking towards CGI and and stuff like that. But but, you know, the Hanson Company they're known for their puppets. So it was exactly. never we never <laughs> we never said it's gonna be CG, it's gonna be animated. It was just you know there was a few ideas. But but you know obviously I came on because I loved the original movie and I love puppets. So and idea. Netflix is the one that just said you should make the series look as much like the original movie as possible. And we were like, you really, you really want to do that? You really, you're going to give us the resources to do that? And we were so, we were shocked. We were so happy. We were shocked and happy, happy. and in awe. And then we went about doing it. That, <laughs> we we made the show of, look like the movie. It's a courageous yeah. decision for a studio to do that. That, a, that was yeah. my reaction yeah, exactly. too when yeah. I saw this. I really, I couldn't believe it. And when I read the uh, the CG thing, I'm like, no, <laughs> that's, that's not an option. You can't do that. Um, how has it been working on something that, I mean, has been alive and thriving because of the very dedicated fan base? Does that kind of necessitate that you guys listen to the fans and take some of their opinions on the series into account here? You know what? There's so many fans involved with the show I mean even Taryn is a big fan <laughs> and you know we have fa we have fans up and down the the crew of the show our writers were tremendous fans and Louie was, was a, a fan, fan. Like, and you know we we've we we had within our crew people who had even won fan contests we had people who won fan design contests one of our script writers won the fan fiction not fan fiction it was a a book writing contest to write a YA book so we had fan contest winners working on our on our crew and it was uh, let's hear from one of our fans <laughs> yeah I mean I um, I have been enamored of this uh, story this franchise um, since I was a young younger boy than I am now since I was a kid and um, I think what I found particularly thrilling about the prospect of being involved is that it is so faithful. It is. It has that same kind of tactile quality of the original movie. It has that weight. We've used real puppets and built these incredible environments. I mean, I haven't personally, but <laughs> the team has. And um, and I think you know, given the fact that the Dark Crystal has such a dedicated core fan base I, I I think it needed to be done in the spirit of the original movie there are some exceptions and I hope it's not demystifying things too much at the points at which the storytelling demands something that goes beyond the realm of puppets there are some other techniques employed to heighten and elevate things but as a dedicated fan and as a purist it only serves to enhance the story and uh, I think anyone who loved the original movie will more than love this. Does working with the puppetry change your job at all as far as Massively. the voice work goes? Yes, it does. How it's, so? It, yes, it really does. And for me, as an actor and someone who really enjoys voice work and has been involved in one or two other anim animation projects, it's a really different challenge because you have to match the rhythm of a very gifted puppeteer but someone who has their own characterful take on the role uh, and I have to slot into that but that's actually lovely and it's a different challenge and it's more of a, a symbiotic relationship so I'm only responsible for really a part of the performance there's a very very talented puppeteer named Neil Sternberg, Sternberg who uh, was responsible for animating Rian and um, and that's a really lovely thing. That's what something. Was it like? It's. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's all good. Please. But the uh, what the partnerships between the puppeteers and the voice artists are pretty incredible. And many times they they never met. These guys did meet, but it ultimately every performance is brought brought to life by two people. The person yeah. puppeteering all the visual motion that you see, and they've actually put down the first pass of the of the performance, and then. The voice art is, that, is so complimentary to that. That's the that that's one of the things that I love about filmmaking. You know, you it's it's a 
bunch of different crafts coming together to make something that they couldn't do on their own. You know, if I'd been the puppeteer behind Rianne, it wouldn't have been very good. Did you ever yeah. try just to see if you could do it? No, no, <laughs> I did I did go and visit the set and I did go and visit the workshop um, just because I wanted to fanboy. Um, <laughs> But no, I never, I never got my my hands dirty, as it were. <laughs> but uh, I did go and see things in real life, and it was great. What was it like seeing the combined effort come together in the final product? Was there anything about it that surprised you? I, I mean, I think the scale of it surprised me. I knew, I knew Louis. I knew Louis's work. I obviously knew the the Henson Company and all of the incredible things that it's done. I don't think I really appreciated quite ha how epic it would feel and watching it, it really is quite extraordinary. It's really elevated and heightened and the first movie is incredibly charming and the, the clever tricks it employs to give it scale and to give it scope, you know, so wide shots where you clearly have um, uh, a, 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 a person running in costume. You know, the, the great thing about making this in 2019 is there's an extra 30 years of wisdom involved in, in, in storytelling. So the, 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 um, the, the things that are utilized to tell that story are all the more complex and sophisticated. You bring up the way it was shot. I was curious about the decision to stick with the Vista vision on this one. Was that a must when you jumped into it? Well, yes, I mean, my goal and it's been, and literally yesterday again, I was watching the original movie, and I really look at the original movie, look at our show, look at the original movie, and <laughs> I just compare, I've been doing this for, you know, the last eight years, we've been working on this, just be as close to the, to, you know, Jim Henson's vision and as, as possible, and, but the tricks have changed, you know, puppets are in the center, and still, you know, the, the, you know the, the lead characters of our show, but everything around this has changed. So, so, but the, 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 it will feel exactly the same, just bigger, you know, more ample, faster, and exciting. You know, it's just it's it's it's, it's quite a different story. Uh, uh, the, the canvas is is much bigger, but the feeling is the same. But you've also shot it so dynamically. You know, Louis is an amazing director. I'm going to speak for him that he's also <laughs> camera. He's, he's also the cameraman, <laughs> and uh, he's cameraman. He operates Steadicam. He he uh, he operated Steadicam almost every single day for ten months on the show. So uh, you know, nobody can move the camera and bring dynamism to puppets like he has oh, and you know we feel like we've never seen puppets shot this way yeah. and I think a lot of people are going to watch the show and forget that they're puppets. Thank you but, but I must say yes yes I shot it differently because I, I just wanted to you know bring it to today's audience mm -hmm. it's 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 you know they're used to puppets but we wanted to say well you know these puppets can compete with superheroes totally and, you know, i mean you yeah, you yeah. you know you i know because i've seen things at various stages of the process but i know that when audiences see the finished version mm -hmm. there are so many sequences in this where people will go how on earth <laughs> did they do that yeah. i mean i saw things at various stages of development and you know i'd be in there recording the voice and i'd go Oh, Louis, that is clever. That is really, that is really <laughs> no, clever. Okay. And it is. It's really, really extraordinary, no, both thanks. from a filmmaking perspective and the techniques that Louis has employed, but also just on the expansion of the lore and the word of the film. From a character perspective, from these, these creatures and these tribes, things happen in the story that, as a fan, gives you that tingle up your spine. You go, oh, that is cool. I mean, the one I really want to talk about, I'm embargoed from talking about because yeah. I looked at the talking points this morning. But there's things that you go, no way. And it is, it's just so cool. It's so, so it's cool. Important. It's important in camera as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just, it's just, yeah. It's exciting hearing the way you guys describe it because there's the built-in nostalgia, the fans that are going to come back no matter what, but you have to capture the, the imagination of a younger generation that's very much in line with a certain type of content that we're getting all the time. And I imagine that must have been a challenge to conceive of when you were first putting this together. Yeah. Well, the scripting is really good. They, uh, our, direct, our writers, Will, um, Addison, Will, Will Matthews right. and Jeff Addis, sorry, I bungled their their <laughs> names um, but they actually really wrote this as if it was people you know they wanted to make sure that you were 
in love with the heroes that you were afraid for their lives when there was danger and stakes and you know it is a it's really exciting uh storyline and a lot of cliffhangers and you know it i don't think we've never really had stories like that to tell with puppets before and i think even the first movie didn't have the um the stakes that this series has there's so many untapped little corners of that original movie i'm wondering walking away from the original movie were there any questions left in your mind that you just were saying to yourself i can't wait to tackle that and flesh that out more in this series i mean i think the real the 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 great thing about making this series is the dark crystal is a very microcosmic look at a very large world. Mm. So it, it really feels like it warrants this new chapter in the story. It's not like, you know, we've had 10 three hour movies and we're eking out juice from something that, you know, has been spent a long time ago. The, the beauty of this is that the, the original movie deals with very few characters in a very, very specific time and you really feel the history of what's happened hanging over that movie. So you're left with a million questions and this series goes about answering lots of them. How do you uh, structure the very beginning of the show? Because of course the movie, it tees it up with some text and it makes sure everyone's caught up to speed. How do you make sure everybody's ready for the series, whether you're a fan or a newcomer? The beauty, the beauty of working, you know, with you know on such a big canvas 10 episodes is that you can actually take your time mm -hmm. with the story you don't have to say everything up front introduce your characters slowly but surely you just make sure that people fall in love with them really understand their the problems the stakes and everything and that that what that's really what uh, Netflix has given us because you know Lisa and I have tried to put together a movie but just compressing so much story like Taryn is saying you know the runes of a civilization and explain this in two hours that's very complicated but in 10 hours yes you can do this and it's Netflix gave yeah, it, we gave love it, yeah. the canvas of the 10 episodes because we've created a very very complex world now with seven clans of Gelfling they live all over this land of Thra in different environments and it's big so you need time and you need the you need the scope of to be able to tell this whole story. I know a lot of people say that, but but shows, but I'm showing. I, I always get confused. We always say the movie because it's really it's the it looks like the movie and it's a ten hour movie. It's got cliffhangers between episodes, and you can watch two episodes or three or four, or you can watch the whole thing. It just feels like one big story I have a million questions but I got the wrap-up sign so I want to toss it I want to toss in one Let's more here show. it does sound like net Netflix was very open and collaborative and this is one heck of a thing to pull off with them but was there any specific element of the show that either you were afraid they would say all right got like too much like rein this in a little bit <laughs> we I mean it's me I pushed it quite, quite far I mean you'll see it's it's for children but Adults will love it. It's in the, sp it's in the spirit <laughs> of the original movie. I watched The Dark Crystal. I mean, the movie came out in 82, right? Yeah. I wasn't born till 89. So I must have seen it in about 95. But the thing that was amazing about it is that it has a kind of a thread of well, it's called the dark crystal it has a thread of darkness that runs through mm -hmm. it it's it's totally appropriate for children but there is something challenging about it there's something that feels a little bit dangerous and dark about it and so it's both satisfying for kids and grown-ups i think and the series is absolutely in the spirit of that I dig all that. Thank you guys Thank so you. much Thank for you. your time today. I am so <laughs> excited you. to catch Thank the you. Dark Thank Crystal, you. as I imagine many of you are out there. Guys, please do not forget to like and share this episode. Keep an eye out for Dark Crystal on Netflix August 30th. August 30th, countdown and binge the entire show with us. We will be back real soon with more San Diego Comic-Con coverage.